Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord. Now when we left off we were fighting vassals in the area surrounding our castle and we're still doing that but I have started to take a more proactive approach. Instead of just defending against them, we're going to take a more proactive approach. You can see here that we actually have Kada in here and I'm hoping that I will be able to take him prisoner as well as Kare and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get him as well. But the thing is, I am surrounded at the moment by even more Southern Empire vassals. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to escape from this situation. As you can see right here, we have someone there, someone there. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it into my castle. And the thing is, is that the only reason why I went into this fight is literally just because I was worried that these AI were waiting for a bigger fish to come along, if you know what I mean. So basically, they're small fish and they're waiting for the big guy. You know, they're waiting for the big force of units to come along, the big army to swallow us up and then just go nom 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 on our faces. So I was hopeful that maybe I could be a little bit proactive in this way and try and prevent that from happening. So that was the reason why I went out and I'm trying to actually deal with them in a decent, decent fashion here. So let's see if we can maybe take this guy out. I'm surprised that I'm actually kind of fast in comparison to him. I mean, like, we're, we're about the same speed as he is. So, yeah, Kada making um, <laughs> a bit of a mistake there. And let's see where my archers are. Let's get my cavalry to actually follow me as well because we do need them to come in from the other side. Let's get a shield wall going as well. And hopefully my cavalry will come in here and, and try and help me out a little bit. Ow. 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 Okay, that was great. Very nice indeed. Thanks very much. There we go. Take out that Batanian horseman. Very nice. And there's another one. Uh, there's a little bit of damage to the horse. That's all that we really wanted to do there, I guess. And I'm just going to kind of lead them around a little bit. Lead them around just a little. And then we will tell my infantry to charge in, and we will tell my cavalry to charge in as well. I'm kind of injured right now, so I have to be a bit careful about what's going on, but should be all right. Got to be very selective about who I attack here. Actually, someone uh, coming in the opposite direction there that I just happened to miss. But so far, we're doing absolutely fine. And Kiroslava is actually gaining huge amounts of skill points in bow, which is really nice to see. And I believe... That is indeed a victory for us. I'm actually kind of surprised that we were able to do that because we're pretty even. You know, we're pretty evenly matched. So I feel like Vlandia is actually quite strong, but maybe it is literally just because we do have some higher tier units. That might very well be the case. Because most of the people, thanks to the new Bannerlord recruiting system, are only able to recruit exactly the same way as the player is and obviously you know how that is you know you go to villages you go to towns and so on and you just try and recruit them from there and that's basically all you can do but uh, obviously in warband that was a little bit different because the lords would wait around in a town somewhere uh, or a castle dependent on what they they owned themselves and then they would basically be like oh okay so now all of a sudden you know, I've got 300 troops out of nowhere. That's the kind of thing that would actually happen in Warband in comparison to Bannerlord, where everything is much more organic, much more natural. And uh, I actually quite like that. I like that a lot. That was one of the things that I actually looked at in one of my Let's Talk videos, and it actually did uh, make a whole bunch of sense. And I loved it. I love that change. I think it really makes things a lot more fun. But the problem with it is that it also then in turn makes it easier for bandits to prey upon the lords. And that's exactly the reason why the snowballing effect has been happening quite 
a bit. And uh, I think they might have fixed it now, but uh, I'm not entirely sure, obviously, because I haven't created a new, you know, haven't created a new save or anything like that. So anyway, let's uh, let's take these guys. So we're just going to take a couple of people here and there. And we can take a couple more. Uh, maybe we can take, there we go. Okay, that's basically it. Okay, so anyone else that I can take in terms of prisoners? Yeah, but I'm going to execute both of these guys straight up. There we go. And uh, can I, yes, I can take all of these. Okay, fantastic. Bear in mind that I am at 1% HP. So if uh, someone does want to attack me, they have a pretty easy time of things. So I'm hopeful that that will not be the case. By the way, this is my weapon, the War Razor. I personally find it to be absolutely fantastic. Love it. Really, really cool weapon. And I was actually thinking that maybe I would give it uh, to Liana because she is really, really good. And I would like her to be able to use that as well. So let's see how she does with it. Maybe she'll do quite well. Maybe she won't. We'll see. Otherwise, we have a lot of food here that we can take. Why do these people have so much food? I don't even know. But we've got 439 food right now. I think that might be a bit too much, but I'm going to take it nevertheless because you never know when you next can go to the town and actually buy some stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, these guys are nowhere near going to attack me. They're just going to run away now, as you can see. And uh, I was actually thankful for that because I am, of course, injured. So this is exactly what they were doing. Look at this. They are waiting here very purposefully. And I personally feel like they're waiting here for a very obvious reason. You know, it's literally just because, as I said, that big fish is going to come along. And we're going to have some issues. So I'm going to keep my army around up until the time when my cohesion doesn't allow me to have it anymore. And uh, I'm hopeful that I will be able to level up my leadership to 50. But as you can see, all of these Vlandians are being taken prisoner by the Southern Empire. You can see they're all being taken prisoner, every single one of them. And I think that we are going to be in a really, really bad situation soon. Here comes Mantios. Aha! <laughs> Mantios, you scoundrel. Uh, this, is, this is not going to go well. Or maybe it is. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe I will surprise us both with a victory of some kind. Uh, <laughs> it's unlikely, isn't it? I feel like it is super unlikely, but we'll see. I'm just going to take a whole bunch of people because I am actually going to be putting them in the garrison, of course. And there we go. All right. So, yes, I know that we're over the limit, but we're right. We're very close by and we should be able to put them into the garrison. Okay. So let's have a look here. Yeah, I can put these guys in there. I'm just going to, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to put a whole bunch in there to maybe make it a little bit less attractive to our enemies. And I'm going to have about 86 in my army right now. There's 118 in the garrison. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's going to be enough, to be honest. I really don't think that's going to be enough. But maybe it will be. Maybe it won't be. It really depends. But I think what I will do is I will keep these prisoners in my prisoners' hold, and then what I can do is I can try to recruit them into my army, and we can start gaining more and more people to help us out. So Mantios is probably going to try and take this, or he's just going to run by. He's just going to run by. Interesting <laughs> and confusing. Very, very confusing. Okay, Svedorn is, is here as well. And, okay, do you want to fight? I'm actually not ready. So do you mind waiting a little bit? <laughs> do you mind waiting a little bit longer? Oh, no, so Svedorn is actually just ignoring what's going on here. And you can see here that we're actually losing food like no one's business. I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, it's because of the garrison. And the prosperity is a little bit too much. So I, I think, uh, yeah, the garrison is too large. So I'm not entirely sure what I can do about that because I'm already giving us a bonus to food production and I can't increase any of these other things because they're already at max. So I'm not entirely sure what we can do about that. Hmm. 
I guess we can just fight. Am I faster than this guy? Well, it doesn't matter. We got him. We got him. All right. So this is another fellow from, isn't it? Isn't he from that uh, that minor faction? I'm not entirely sure about that, but uh, whatever the case, he has only 52. This should be a very easy victory for us, or at least I hope it will be. And then we can head on to, um, well, somewhere else. I was actually hoping that we could do a castle siege, but there have just been so many vassals. I mean, you know how many points of combat strength the Southern Empire has. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. So, obviously, I will try to reduce it as much as I possibly can, but it's a very, very difficult process to do. Uh, I, I, I like this. I like where I am right now. So, if I could get my guys to come over here, we are in a really, really good position. I'm going to put my cavalry down there as well because they can come swooping in from down below, and then hopefully we will be in a great position. So we'll see what happens. So the enemy only has 10 cavalry. I mean, I don't even know why I'm using a huge amount of tactics here. I could theoretically just charge straight on in and probably do all right, but I just have so many crossbowmen that I'd kind of like to make good use of them, if that makes sense. So, you know, I think they're going to you know, show us that they're quite, quite good at what they do. Unfortunately, the infantry is actually preventing them from firing at the moment. There we go. Okay, so now they're actually firing, doing a bit of damage, as you can see. Not too bad. And now these guys are going to come in here, and I will be attempting to do a little bit of damage myself. Oh, 87 only? I thought I, I thought I did much more than that with my speed bonus. My speed bonus I thought was actually quite good, but apparently it wasn't. This one of mine. Yep. <laughs> That's the thing. Those Kuzate Karnate uh, units that I have in my army, they're so confusing to me because I see them from the back and I think to myself, oh yeah, that's definitely an enemy. And then I see their shield or some other colorful part of them. And I'm like, oh no, no, it's not. Thankfully, there's no friendly fire with the exception of the obvious. Is this, is this an enemy as well? Doesn't seem like it. Well, everyone is running. As you can see, we literally lost zero people. Actually, kind of amazing. But I guess it's because we had an overwhelming environmental advantage. Take this guy prisoner. I'm not even going to look at their family anymore. I'm literally just going to take them prisoner and execute them almost immediately. Let's take these guys. Uh, did I just take some peasants? Uh, I don't think so. Hmm, not entirely sure, not entirely sure, but uh, whatever the case, we'll just take, we'll just take these prisoners. I'm over my prisoner limit? Ah, well, that's fine. That's okay. We're, we're pretty close to our castle after all. And uh, we'll just take a little bit more of this. I should not be taking any more food. I'm addicted to taking this food now for some reason. I don't know why that's happening. Stop me, please. Yes. Uh, okay, well, these guys, okay, Achaku is actually, oh, hello. He actually wants to fight us. Achaku actually wants to fire this. Say whatever you have to say. After that, you die. Okay, well, thanks very much. You're outnumbered. Give up. Uh, the power levels say a different thing, Mr. Achaku. Thank you. Uh-huh. You, you, did you see his grin? You saw his grin when he first started this fight. We're, he, said, he said we're outnumbered, but we're actually outnumbering him by six units. So not entirely sure what he was thinking there. But uh, his grin says everything you need to know. He thought that he had the advantage right there. Although, I think he grins like that at basically all, all moments of the day. So, maybe that's not the case. Anyway, this is going to be a very, very lucrative battle for us. We're going to gain a huge amount of renown from it. And that's exactly what we want. So, let's get these guys down there. Get the archers a little bit further up. And uh, we should probably put them a little bit closer, to be fair. Let's put them like this. And then we'll get these guys into a shield wall. These guys following me. Now, these are going to be kind of difficult to deal with. Hmm. But I think I can maybe do something. To 
try and defeat them because obviously the Vlandians are known for their cavalry as well as the Kuzate. The Kuzate are actually very good as well with their cavalry, but uh, they will probably not be very good without any kind of support from anyone else. They seem to literally be charging in by themselves, which is probably not the best idea, as you can see. They seem to be getting murdered like no one's business right now, and I am literally able to just do massive damage with my pole arm without having to worry. And now you can see that the enemy is actually starting to attack. But look at look at the look at the kill feed. Vlandian crossbowman doing massive amounts of damage right there too. Which is really nice to see. Uh, yeah. Also we need to tell everyone I, I think we'll just tell everyone to charge in actually and then we'll just see if we can uh, maybe do something to uh, kind of get their morale down. I personally feel like winning with a morale victory is much, much better than eliminating the entirety of the enemy's forces. Because if you can eliminate their morale stock, it makes all the difference. And it basically makes them run away before you have lost more than, I don't know, more than 10 of your, uni your units because then they're not fighting to the last man. You know what I mean? So having that morale increase against them is invaluable making them run away because you know even in warband they did have that morale system in place basically what it means is if you perform some kind of amazing offensive attack against your opponent in some way and i'm talking mostly about cavalry attacks here so if, if cavalry comes charging in to your your archers or something like that so they come charging into your archers and then, then you're like, oh, okay, what am I supposed to do about this? You know, you know, what, what, what are you supposed to do? But the thing is, is that that initial attack causes a lot of morale damage to your forces. And as a result, every single one of those units has a percentage chance of retreating and basically fleeing in terror. That's kind of how it works. And they have uh, expanded upon that in Bannerlord, and they've actually made it much more lucrative to make these very big sweeping offensive attacks and then actually causing that morale damage to your opponent. So it really makes a huge difference in the grand scheme of things because if you're able to get, I don't know, half of the enemy's infantry running away, then you have a massive advantage as a result. Anyway, we're going to take this guy prisoner. Achaku, this is your last on-screen time. I'm very sorry to have to tell you, but... Uh, you're fired. Yes. You're fired. Okay, where is he? Okay, I've got to kill this guy as well. There we go. Kill that guy. And we will also kill him. There we go. And look at that. We actually destroyed a clan. Did you see that? He was the last of his clan. Wow. Okay. That's some pretty heavy stuff right there. Very, very heavy. All right. Uh, Batanian volunteers, do they level up into anything? Yes, they actually do. Okay, great. Hmm, they actually have a Vlandian Banner Knight. That's pretty cool. And some Imperial Elites. they got some Mercenaries and so on. I will be taking people that are relatively high tier. And I am actually just going to take all of them because I've just realized that I'm already over limits. I didn't think I was already over limits, so I'm just going to take them. And there we go. We'll just take all of these step horses. Step war horses, actually. And I have way too much food as it is. So I will not be taking anything except the beer and the olives. Because they're, they're actually pretty good for morale's sake. And they do a bunch of other things as well for us. And I don't really need... See, that's the thing. I don't even need the... Uh, I don't even need the armor or the money even from most of this. And most of my people actually have really, really good gear on. Liena could use some better gloves, so there you go. She's she's wearing some better gloves now. And we also have this as well. Okay, Jin, she's wearing good gloves too. And aha, El Yaksha could definitely use some better gloves. There we go, massive upgrade, massive upgrade right there. Very, very nice to see that. And I think that is basically it. All right. Fantastic. Okay, so that was a really, really lucrative fight for us. And we're still losing a huge amount of people right there. Okay, so now I'm basically going to go and I'm going to disband my army. 
We're going to just let him go and do whatever he wants to do because I need to rest up a little bit. He needs to rest up a little bit. And I think that it's probably going to be for the best. And what I'm going to do is once my forces are all restored, I'm going to call for another army and then we're going to go for the castle. Or at least I hope that we will be able to make that work. Unfortunately, it seems as though because the garrison is so incredibly large right now, it seems like this is causing a great deal of problems. Actually, the prosperity is the main issue here. Maybe if I put this and increase our prosperity, that might actually make more of a difference. But yeah, look at these Vlandians. They're all dying. They're all dying against the Southern Empire. I, I really don't know whether we will be able to pull this off, but uh, I'm trying my best here. I mean, you know, I'm doing my part, but it just seems as though our allies are not really doing theirs, which is kind of disappointing, to be honest. Okay, uh, is there anything else that I can do here? I guess we'll just try and recruit a bunch of these. I'm trying to get as many high-tier units as possible, but it's kind of difficult. Okay. That seems about right. And look at that. Did you see that? See that? I got ported over here just by clicking on leave from, from, the, uh, from the castle. That's kind of weird. All right. So Belgia has created an army right over there. Let's actually take a look at the map and actually see what's happening because... Uh, 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 yeah. You can kind of tell what, what happened. Yeah. Batania is done. Batania is completely and utterly done. And it is literally only Vlandia remaining. And I will now take a look at our diplomacy here. So we still have an, an actually pretty decent combat strength. But Batania, on the other hand, only has 800. And we're now at peace with them. But that doesn't make any difference. Because the Southern Empire has 23,000. Wow. Okay. <laughs> think I'm, yeah, I think I, uh, I don't think I can do anything about this, but we will keep trying because I kind of want to see what happens. But uh, yeah, that is actually kind of insane. All right, so let's go to the... Uh, okay, fine. Let's do let's do the decision because they keep bugging me about the whole decision thing and I have 933 influence. I'm just going to save just in case because, again, don't really want to crash at this point. All right, so let's see. So they, uh, they, um, they're supporting this. Okay. Ruler clan gains 100 dinars per day for each town in the kingdom. Okay, so this is... Voting to disavow it. Okay, so let's support that. I totally support disavowing it. And it doesn't really matter whether I spend... Oh, wow. It actually... Oh, okay. So they, they actually won. The Vlandians will continue debasing the currency. Oh, personally, I felt like it was not a very good bonus for us to have. Personally. I wonder whether I can bring any other things uh, to the table here. As you can see, there's actually a, a huge, huge list of massive amounts of stuff right here. So let's have a look. Mm, I don't know whether this is even going to make any difference to us right now. Mm, no, it's basically mostly... Oh, influence cost of creating an army is reduced by 30% for the ruler. Armies led by the ruler earn cohesion at 30% less. And armies led by non-ruler local... Oh, okay. Cost 10% more influence to create. Yeah. Hmm. Ruler's party size is increased by 80. That seems pretty cool. I mean, that's the thing. If you create your own faction, then you're going to have a much easier time of things. Ah, here we go. Tier 3 plus clans gain one influence per day. That seems pretty fun. Let's propose this. And we'll spend 100. Actually, does it even matter? It doesn't even matter what we spend. I'll just, I'll just spend 50. All right, so yeah, that has passed because that has an overwhelming majority. So there we go. We'll start having the Lords of the Realm meet as a permanent council. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. Uh, what about this? Military achievements gain, wow, 30% more influence. Troop wages, however, are increased by 10%. I guess we could do that, but 30% more influence, I guess it's pretty good 
because then our forces will be able to get more armies and larger armies. But uh, it depends, because obviously it's going to be quite expensive eventually. Castle upgrade costs are reduced. Castles yield one additional influence per day. Okay, let's uh, let's propose that as well. Why not? Uh, it seems like all of these things are actually passing very, very easily, in actual fact. Armies led by tier 5 plus nobles require 10% less influence. Wow, there's a huge amount of different things that you can choose here. And I don't even know what is good and what is n what is not, but... Uh... Hmm. Mil mil oh, militia quality is increased by 10%, but village tax income is reduced by 5 all clans whose leader has high charm gain one influence per day. All clans whose leader uh, lose one influence per day. Oh, wow. All right. Recruits replenish 30% faster. I'm going to propose this. I would like this to actually pass, if at all possible. I could increase it by 2%, but I think I'm... Ah, unfortunate. Unfortunate. Okay, that did not work. Okay. Well, whatever the case, we did a little bit of lore, lore making, I guess you could say. And I think the best thing that I can do right now, as I said, is to create another army. So we're going to get Akram. Is that it? That's literally the only guy I can get. Okay, I'm not going to get anyone then by the looks of things. That's just not worth it. All right, so let me actually just take a, take a look at my clan tab because I would like to see how Byron is actually doing. Okay, Byron doesn't seem to be doing much. Which is generally what they do. You know, children. Babies, shall we say. They don't generally do much. But uh, anyway, oh, there's Fafn, an old friend. Fafn is the old friend who jumped uh, jumped ship and went to go and join the, the Southern Empire. Ah, seems like the Southern Empire is super powerful for some reason. I, I guess it is literally just because my game was kind of screwed up by the fact that the snowballing happened. I think the snowballing definitely made a huge difference to my game in general and has actually caused a lot of problematic decisions to be made in regards to all the Sturgeon vassals defecting to the Southern Empire, all the, uh, all the Kuzade Khanate vassals defecting to the Southern Empire as well because they had good relations with them and as a result they joined them but nowadays that actually doesn't happen because when as i've as i've explained before when the leader of a of an attack actually does something against another and for some reason i got ported all the way over here as you can see but yeah when someone does something against another their relation actually goes down and that is how it is supposed to be but uh yeah that did not happen when i was attempting to uh, keep Sturgia alive, which is actually kind of sad to me. But Cal oh, Calatild has actually created an army. All right, I guess I will be going over there and we'll see what we can do. I am running through enemy territory, which is really bad. I feel like my castle is probably going to get taken without me staying there, uh, which is also a problem. But I guess the best thing that I can do is maybe just try to consolidate my power as much as possible try and get my people in a position to fight back as best as i can oh hello yeah i don't i don't want to fight that thank you really don't want to fight that so let's just continue onward they're losing a huge amount of units due to their starvation do you see that wow that's that's kind of crazy if that guy turns around and attacks me right now i am done uh but thankfully he's not doing that all right, so where is Calatild? Calatild is all the way over here. And where am I in relation to that? Okay, I might, I'm going to have to travel all the way over there. That's kind of risky. But I think we should be able to do it. Because being, being able to join an army at this point is going to be, well, basically a necessity. You need to do it. You need to do it. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, uh, no, never mind. Never mind. Okay, I actually thought that there was... Something uh, really bad going on here. Oh my. Oh dear. Yeah. This is harsh. Very harsh. They are going to get murdered. They did get murdered by the looks of things as you can see right there. And I'm not entirely sure what I can do about this. 
Oh, uh, there's Lise, still running around with her caravan. Thank you. Yeah, I actually don't even need the caravans anymore, to be honest. So I could technically pull them all back. There's only 146 here. Do you think we can do it? I mean, if an army appears out of nowhere, I'm going to have to stop this anyway. But it seems to me like that's probably going to happen. Okay, I'm going to build a battering ram and we'll build a siege tower as well. Should we build two siege towers? Let's build two siege towers. Why not? And who knows? Maybe I can get my engineering up or something like that. Oh, hello. Okay, yeah, that's not going to happen. A two hundred and forty-four. There's no way I can do. Okay, there's no way I can do that. Uh, okay, so there's someone else creating another army, which I might want to join, if I can. Where is he? Uh, I'm I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close. Okay, let's go down there and see how many he has in his army, because if he has a uh, relatively good amount, then we might be able to do it. Okay, no, he's only got fifty. He's literally running around with 50. Oh my. Okay. Seems like this might very well be the beginning of the end. But we'll see what happens in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.